Good morning. This is Bill from out of Europa, Naples. I'm, again, a lovely sort of wet uh, Christmas Eve morning with decent weather, good temperature in the 60s. Uh, I just couldn't be happier. We've had days of miserable weather, and it's fantastic. And today I have arguably what could be one of the greatest family cars of all time. This is a 2009 Mercedes-Benz S600. And of course, there comes a time in a person's life when they decide to have a family, they get married, you know, their thoughts of what they had before the sports cars are all given up and replaced with, you know, I don't know what you'd call it, sort of decent, normal transportation with stow-and-go seating. And, you know, if you're not of the highest budget, you've got to sort of peruse your way through all the different used car options out there and come up with the car that best suits your family. And I would argue that uh, if you're, uh, you know, a young man out there whose wife is looking for some kind of ridiculous SUV thing, like, I don't know, one of these things here that has a bunch of seats and sits like a school bus, you should try to convince her uh, to getting into this. Uh, this again, an 09 Mercedes-Benz S600. Uh, there's many arguments you can make for it. Number one, it's been depreciated quite a bit. I mean, this is a car that cost new in 09, maybe $150,000, which is a lot of dough. And now it can be bought for right around 10% or less of that. So uh, the value is there. Number two, it's loaded with safety features. I mean, those little kids are going to be safe as hell in this thing. There's all sorts of seatbelt tensioners and airbags and side impact stuff and rollover stuff. Uh, your kids will never have felt so safe. And of course, when you take out the high center of gravity uh, that the the SUVs have, the chances of rolling over are next to nil. So uh, anyway, as we go around these things, we'll get into why this makes such a great family car. Uh, now this is the W221 S-Class. Uh, it replaced the, um, what the hell did it replace? The W220, uh, which was bigger and wider and bigger inside than the previous S-Class, the W140. I know this is all a pain in the ass, but I got to get through it. Uh, which uh, the 140 was widely considered to be one of the most over engineered cars ever produced, if not the most over-engineered car ever produced. Uh, I mean, it was shocking. Uh, the 220 toned that back a little bit. Uh, it became, you know, some people would have called it cheaper or, or uh, you know, less uh, built. Uh, and that's fine because it really was impossible to build the successor to the 140 as, um, in fact, I've got one back here I can show you. It was impossible to build it any more overbuilt than it already was. So they really had only one direction to go. Uh, and that was to make the car a little more simple. Uh, there you see we've got two of them, those um, uh, black cars uh, poking out right there. Uh, still love those things. They really are, to me, in many ways, the pinnacle uh, of the S-Class, uh, at least in terms of uh, design. But... Um, Anyway, that's kind of a neat piece. But get into this. So the 220 came out. A lot of people didn't like it uh, for whatever reason. And then the 221 was a great leap forward in terms of design, materials, accoutrements, technology. You know, the S has always been on the cutting edge of cars, but uh, this particular model uh, took that even beyond uh, most of the normal leaps. And they, they make, you know, a 150 grand thing like this with all kinds of technology. And then that ultimately filters its way down into smaller cars. Mercedes-Benz ends up with a lot of safety and performance patents. Uh, the styling was a little bit controversial. Some people didn't like all the fender humps and stuff it has. They said it looked like an overblown RX-8. Yeah, that's fine. I think it looks great. I think it looks like a big imposing S-Class. And, you know, if you ask people, you know, about Mercedes-Benz, the S is one of the cars that they're going to know. And uh, so I think it has to make an impact. You see the sun's coming out and starting to bother us. Uh, when you opt for this package, this version, the S600, you do get some extra stuff uh, over the um, uh, already pretty expensive S550. There's one right there. Uh, very similar. In fact, I think this is the same year. That one does have the sport package uh, with the AMG wheels and such. But on this S600, you get the 600 wheels, which are more special and more bigger. So you still get the same sport package, but uh, a few little accoutrements so that people knew you spent the extra 50 grand. You see it as uh, sort of boxy quad pipes down there. Well, not really quad, but box to look like quad at the bottom. Uh, that's different from the S. 
Uh, it's got a pano roof up on top. You know, you do get a lot more options on these cars. And uh, there are a lot of fascinating features in this thing. 09 was the last year these cars had true mechanical steering. Uh, in 2010, it went to an electric design, which a lot of people didn't like because the steering feel pretty much evaporated. It was all done by computer in 2010, and not everyone loved that. This was the last one where you were truly connected to the steering in the front. Uh, you can see those big bi-xenon headlamp assemblies. Uh, this little guy here, this little plastic thing in the grill, which you don't see in the other S over there, uh, is part of the Distronic cruise control, sort of a radar-based cruise control. Uh, you see it also has a uh, camera up top that works in conjunction with that and also gives you night vision, uh, which is, of course, a very useful tool in, a, in the world of... You never know when you're going down the road. You're, you're going to live in a family neighborhood. It's dark out. Some little crappy kid could have escaped his window and run out into the street in the middle of the night. Uh, you know, with night vision on this S600, you're not going to run him over, and that's going to make everyone happy, probably. So, uh, again, good arguments to use when dealing with the wife. And this car, now this one in particular, its I don't know if I ever mentioned this, we have two lots. We have our own lot here, and then we have a wholesale lot in a different location. And because this thing has over 100,000 miles, it's going to the wholesale lot where it's going to be a bargain for someone. And uh, I am sure that the cost of ownership is going to be very, very reasonable. Anyway, let's get into this thing. There's big Michelins on there. Have a look inside the trunk. So plenty of room to put, you know, wiffle ball bats and high chairs and the, the, the machetes, whatever a family needs if they're going to go have a picnic or something. Uh, you get a little infant containment net back here, but only when he's very small. They get the toddler size. They're going to crawl over that. Uh, another one over on this side. Under here, you have some kind of a compartment where you can put your Uzis and Mac-10s to uh, keep your family safe. And... Uh, you can also hang some plastic shopping bags or roadkill from this little guy right here. So uh, pretty nice features in the trunk. Uh, also, to take the pressure off the missus, she doesn't have to deal with, like, pushing down on the trunk lid. She can just press this guy, and down it comes. It's got a power lift gate just like in a Toyota Highlander. I have a look under the hood. Uh, the sun's going to ruin everything. It's the first time I've seen it in days. Oh god, they still make the damn hood release. It's hard to hard to find in these things. Okay, so under here is what makes the S600 particularly special. And there it is. That is, uh, what is it, six liters of twin turbocharged Mercedes 12-cylinder. Uh, it's, it's insane. It's epic. It's the most wonderful practical fuel efficient motor put in a vehicle. I mean, it's just absolutely fantastic. So it's got two turbochargers. It has uh, 500 plus horsepower, 600 plus pound feet of torque. And uh, that will propel this vehicle in its day in 09 or 08, whatever. This was faster to 60 than a 911 Carrera S. Uh, it uh, was faster in the quarter mile than a Lamborghini Murcielago and was about 12 inches short of a Mazda RX-8 braking from 70 to zero. So with speeds like that, you can avoid trouble. You know, you can really get away from stranger danger or whatnot, and uh, you can stop in a heartbeat if somebody's there for you. So, I mean, ponder that. Zero to 60 in 4.2 seconds, tested by car or driver. That is incredible for this, you know, 5,000 pound beast. Uh, the quarter mile time, 12.6. 12.6. When I was a kid, you know, just coming out of high school, doing the racing over in Bradenton, the quarter mile track, I'd have killed for a 12.6. I dipped in the 13s in my Firebird once uh, with a hot cam and headers and such, and I was so happy. Uh, I mean, this thing right out of the package just wastes it, and uh, at the same time, it'll give you rump a massage. So uh, it's amazing how time has marched on and given us great cars, and now those great cars have gotten old and tired, and they're cheap for us to buy. So so you absolutely have to love it. Uh, anyway, reliability, you know, it could only be good. It could only, I mean, you're talking about German engineering here. What could go wrong? Uh, sure, there's a few modern hyper-technical systems, but almost for sure a lot of build quality has been put into those and they're sure to last a long long time so I wouldn't worry at all about the reliability factor. I'm sure it's just fine. 
big tri-pointed star leading the way. Uh, her friends will appreciate that at the country club or at the uh, daycare. So in the back seat, here's where you're gonna tuck the little kitties uh, or your Canadians, and they're gonna be pretty damn chipper back here. So let's hop in. You've got tons of leg room, no problem at all. Kids grow pretty fast these days. You heard the soft closed door there. Uh, we've got heated and ventilated seats. We've got uh, sunscreens, windscreen, side screens. Uh, we've got uh, little powder your nose makeup mirrors back here. Uh, you've got, um, you know, part of the panoramic sunroof, all very nice stuff. Uh, this has the optional rear seat uh, dynamic seat package that gives you, uh, you know, the lumbars and massages and all that sort of thing. Very, very nice, including a nice little place to put a fancy German 9mm. So uh, everyone's going to be pretty chipper back here with their hot and cold seats, their uh, dynamic seat adjustments, and good gun storage. Also, a very convenient place to hang dry cleaning. And this 221, you got all kinds of little stuff the 220 didn't have. They really upped their game in the material department. The wood trimmed with the uh, uh, the polished aluminum looking stuff, the uh, power seat. Look at that, all power seats. I mean, it's just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, everything that was plastic became metal and uh, more expensive. And that's part of what makes these 221s, I think, a little bit nicer inside than uh, the prior generation S-Class. Uh, you do also get soft closed doors, very, very nice stuff, and uh, this one does have the uh, blind spot assist. You see the little triangle there, pretty early in 09. You also get these fantastic V12 logos on the side, so people will know you're really uh, treating your family to a safe car. Right, let's hop in, fire it up. Foot on the brake, we're going to tap that guy has that high torque starter. Nothing else in the world sounds as good as the starter in this thing and the 12 when it fires to life. Probably too bright for night assist. Man, what a shame. I do have a nice picture of that though in the in the photos. Let's get our seat pulled on. Okay, so again, did I mention it has lots of airbags to keep everyone safe? Great stuff. Uh, over here, you've got your 83-way power seats with memory. You get this brilliant feature where you can hit this button, and now this will all control the passenger seat, including, I might add, the uh, hot and cold seats. So, uh, you know, Andrew, I used to go to lunch with Andrew every day, and Andrew's is what people would call a bastard. And he loved on a hot day to turn on the heated seat secretly uh, until I got uncomfortable on the way. He got me almost every time, even though I kind of in my head knew it was coming. Somehow I didn't and he would get me. Uh, in a car like this, it was just too friggin' easy for him. He could hit the right seat control uh, like that, hit the heated seat, boom, it's on over there, made me miserable. And you can do the same thing with your kids or your wife, so uh, they'll enjoy that a lot. Uh, it's got two screens up here. It's got your uh, command screen uh, in the center that can be angled somehow. Yeah, here it is. We can angle it to the left or to the right. So uh, again, if the missus needs to be in charge, she can just aim that towards her. Uh, you've also got this other screen here in the middle making up your you know digital fuel gauge and also your night vision stuff which is all great uh here's your light controls your power windows again the beautiful use of wood and leather everywhere gorgeous steering wheel buttons all very nice stuff uh, your prerequisite analog clock so everyone will know it's a luxury car even if they can't feel the hum of 12 cylinders you've got a dashboard beautifully wrapped in leather up here you've got your self domain mirror with home link you got a little place to put your ray-bans again this alcantara headliner which is gorgeous truly you've got um, your panoramic sunroof that'll open that vent or that cover then you've got this one all very nice so now you've got a big giant sunroof above you that you can open up and let in the night air or the day air if you so wish 
all working very well. Uh, the command unit, probably the best at this era uh, version of uh, German one knob design. They give you this big aluminum paddle that uh, works everything, but also a nice bunch of uh, excess buttons to, to get it one handed. So way better than BMW system. You get up here and you can spin, you can get into your navigation, which you can then program with voice command, some feature the life alike. Uh, over into audio, you can get into uh, the telephone, the Bluetooth, you get into audio, you're going to get all the different audio stuff, your satellites, your DVDs, your MP3s, whatever you need to entertain yourself. What do we have now? Wow, that's some of the crappiest music I've ever heard. And we've got a dumpster guy looking to get in here. And uh, the idiot detailer is, of course, parked in front of the dumpster, even though he knows today is the day for it. So I hope that guy honks his air horns at him. Uh, anyway, over here is my favorite feature on this car. I press this guy, and I get the massage seats. Let's get over to pulse mode. There it is, fast and vigorous. Oh my god, if there's anything better in the world than a fast and vigorous massage from your V12S class, I'm really not sure what it could be. Anyway, we're going to get hurried out of here, so let's just go. Hopefully we've got some heat building in the engine. you got your little electronic shifter, you got your shifter paddles, your flippities at the 10 and 2. Uh, very, very nice stuff. you got a rear view camera. Yeah, it's just got all the goodies. Uh, it has an uh, electronic stability program that works with the traction control and ABS to uh, keep the car on the road. Uh, it's got uh, standard ABC sport suspension. Uh, that's a uh, very fantastic and uh, quite reliable system that pumps hydraulic fluid and air uh, through all the different shocks and struts on the car to keep it level. So if you're braking really hard, it keeps the front end up. If you're uh, you know, turning left or right really hard, it'll keep those sides pumped and keep the car straight and narrow. Very, very nice stuff. And again, a good safety pitch to the wife. Uh, oh my God, the massage seat. Oh, that is fantastic. She's going to love that. Um, what do we have down here? Direct access for the climate control. All this stuff got more expensive. You know, these are metal buttons now instead of the plastic ones on the prior generation. Uh, the silver effect vents and such, all very lovely. Under here you've got a CD changer which is full of CDs. I shudder to think what we're going to find in here. Let's see if I can get one to come out. That's probably broken. No, nope, coming out. All right, so what do we got? Chris Body, slowly down the world. I never heard of it. Probably crap. Let's see what we got. I have to load it now. I'll load. Okay. Oh, for the love of God. Uh, can I? Can I load? Let's see. Yeah, there we go. No right back out it comes. I don't know what it is about car electronics, but they really hate me. Anyway, the hell with it. I'm, I, yeah, I'm just going to leave that for the moment. We'll come back to it. Uh, down here, you've got um, some cup holders that miraculously look like they're not going to break. Uh, you have a genuine ashtray because uh, even if it's mostly poor people who smoke, you get rich enough and they start smoking again. So that works out pretty nice. You've got this lovely wooden console with buttons, direct access stuff. Uh, on the S600, this little guy, it's leather in the 550s. It's now uh, beautiful burl wood in here, kind of an egg-shaped thing where you can direct dial the phone or put in a radio station. In here, you've got the Bluetooth unit installed. Nice that it's there, but it does take up room for gun storage. So obviously, you're going to have to find a different spot for your 9mm. Uh, let's go for a spin. Oh, one more thing. I'll show you these uh, sunscreens in the back. They're all power-activated and they work great. I think we also have a rear sunscreen up it comes so uh, you keep your kids nice and shaded. As global warming continues you can keep the UV rays off their necks. And one of those ridiculous Jeeps with the angry headlights. Oh no your Jeep's so angry. It's scary. So anyway, driving this car is probably one of the finest, even 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 this tired, you know, 10-year-old, 100,000 miler, you still get the exact same feel that you would have got when it was new. I mean, it's a very different feel than, say, in that Saturn. 
very, very different. It is a mixture of solidity, uh, Teutonic poise, uh, body stiffness, and at the same time, it's soft and big and comfortable like a Bentley. I mean, it is a, it, it the way they have balanced those two things is, oh God, the massage seats. <sighs> That's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. If I could get it to perform the Asian massage function, it would save me a lot of money. Um, anyway, the ride of this car, you know, by virtue of the ABC Sport, which you could you could put on sport setting. Who gives a crap? We're going to leave it the way it is. But um, it it just beautifully blends, you know, that whole Lincoln Town Car cushy highway ride thing uh, with again something that could handle on a racetrack without embarrassing itself. Never mind the way it's out accelerating 911s and and um, <laughs> Lamborghini Murcielagos. I mean, it's an absolutely incredible feat of engineering from uh, from Mercedes and of course was enough at the time uh, to keep it ahead of the uh, BMW 750. It's of course uh, nemesis and, and rival the 7 Series and the S-Class. Uh, Mercedes I think had it hands down in this area. I'm sure some BMW geeks will disagree but you're wrong. You're wrong. In this generation Mercedes had it. They took it to you and they won. Uh, I'm getting virtually zero vibrations of any kind. Zero connectivity with the road when I'm just sitting here at all. I mean, nothing. It's uh, a complete detachment. And yet, if we start pushing it, I'm going to get great steering feel. I'm going to get, oh God, super fast lights. Thank God people are breaking them today. Uh, the poise of this car is just miraculous. Let's hammer it. You know, there's this little pause, the Mercedes pause, where it sort of says, okay, are you sure you want to do this? And then all hell breaks loose, it kicks in, and you start rolling like a freight train. Now, it does have a driver adaptive transmission, so if you were not, oh my God. I mean, to cruise this thing at 140 on the Autobahn would have just been incredible. Uh, anyway, the driver adaptive transmission will learn your driving style and adapt accordingly. So if you're a little old lady, it's going to soften the shifts and, uh, you know, not do so quick a kick down. Uh, if you drive the thing like some sort of uh, bonsai warrior, then it's going to become much more responsive. And it, yeah, it takes a few days to learn it. I can tell from driving this one that it's kind of some old fuddy-duddy that was tooling it around. It definitely needs somebody with a little more pep to wake it up. Um, but you have to be careful because let's say I hammer it now. I'm going to be in the back of that uh, creepy looking whatever the hell it is, Pathfinder, in like one tenth of a second. You have to aim this thing very, very carefully when you're hitting the gas pedal uh, or else you're going to really take someone out. Maybe you could turn on the Destronic and the car will go into four wheel lock up for you. Well, anyway, good luck to you. I hope you are able to sell your wife on the idea that this thing is such a terrific bargain in the family car world because you will be happier if you do. Uh, you know, when she's off visiting the in-laws, uh, you're going to be able to borrow this family truckster and have a lot of fun with it. Uh, if she has to go for the Honda Odyssey, well, you know, it's a great piece. It's the Swiss Army knife of the car world, but it won't um, it won't order out quarter mile on Lamborghini. So uh, where, where's the fun in that? Anyway, there it is. Oh my god, look at these ladies jogging. Oh, that's good for him. They could use that. Keep it up, girls. Uh, 2009 Mercedes-Benz S600 V12 by Turbo. Uh, this one at our wholesale lot, AEWNaples.com. Uh, you can find some interesting crap over there. Uh, give Richard or Dan a call. And out oh, there, cheated out of the light. Fantastic. Uh, but anyway, some, some good stuff. Uh, if you have an interest, I don't know. If I, I don't even remember their phone number. It's on the website, aewnaples.com. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Whatever you celebrate. God bless you. And uh, good luck. And we will see you after, um, after the holidays. Take care. Bye-bye.